Avengers Endgame, the culmination of over 10 years of story development, brought us not just to the Infinity Stones, but to a new type of time travel. Quantum time travel. Now, as a do-or-die MCU fan, I will be the first to say that every line of Ant-Man hurts my science brain. But just how crazy is this concept of time travel through the quantum realm? Just to be clear, the quantum realm isn't a real place. I'm Abby, your pop culture scientist, and this is Hollywood Science Avengers Endgame. Now, in my last video, I broke down some of the main ideas around quantum time and how this can lead to quantum time travel, or could lead to. So if you want some more details on some of today's topics, then be sure to check that video out. But in this video, we're going to review quantum time and closed time-like curves briefly, and then go on to look at the Planck scale and the Deutsch proposition, and what this all means for quantum time travel. So let's get into it. Time works differently in the quantum realm. The only problem is right now, we don't have a way to navigate it. Now, I've made fun of the science of Batman a lot, but was he right about this? When we describe events in science, mathematically speaking, we have to specify a direction for time. As we've said, cause precedes effect. But when we describe events using the equations of quantum mechanics, the direction of time tends not to matter. There is no defined arrow of time. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that causality is violated. The arrow of time may not be important in the mathematics of a quantum event, but that doesn't mean that physically the effect will come before the cause. But what if there was a different way to describe quantum events? Now, Philip Walther is a physicist at the University of Vienna who explores the idea of superposition of time. The work demonstrates that in quantum systems, events can happen in a superposition of different orders. Cause can happen before effect and after effect at the same time. This phenomenon is known as quantum superposition of causal orders, suggesting that causality may be subject to quantum weirdness. But let's take this further. Vlatko Vedral, a physicist at the University of Oxford, aims to treat time more fundamentally within quantum mechanics, maybe even treating time as entangled, or revising the wave function so that it encompasses behavior across all space-time. Now, this approach leads to ideas in quantum gravity or quantum space-time, where time could have quantum properties and not just be a classical backdrop for quantum fields. Time entanglement specifically has implications in connection with closed time-like curves and quantum time travel. Closed time-like curves are causal loops in space-time, the idea being that it loops back on itself so that if you interacted with one, you would travel back to the past. But while there are a mathematical possibility in general relativity under a bunch of different conditions, they would violate causality and lead to time travel paradoxes. However, if a quantum object can be subject to superposition of causal orders, and if it can be entangled with its different versions in time, then quantum time travel is perfectly plausible. For quantum objects under many specific conditions, this is extreme speculative physics, which is fascinating, but mathematical ideas don't necessarily have to be the right idea. But science is a process, and it is always evolving, so maybe, just maybe, Ant-Man isn't that insane after all. No, that lies, Ant-Man is still completely batshit. But now that we have a better idea on how time could be different in the quantum realm, we kind of see what Scott was going for. So enter Tony Stark. Tony, after everything you've seen, is anything really Quantum impossible? fluctuation messes with the Planck scale, which then triggers the Deutsch proposition. Can we agree on that? Let's start with the Planck scale. In science, no matter where you are in the world, we use standard international units, SI units. These are meters for distance, second for time, kilogram for mass. But there is another set of units that we can use that helps us describe the universe, and these are Planck's units. Max Planck developed a set of units which are based on properties of free space, so a vacuum where there is no matter. Why did he do this? Well, <laughs> he wanted to set up units that would be independent of special bodies or substances, so that they would keep their meaning for all times and for all civilizations, including extraterrestrial and non-human ones, and he called them natural units of measure. Now, more simply put, if the units don't depend on a specific piece of matter, 
then they are truly universal. The units will be the same for all intelligent life now, in the future, in all of space. Now, as with the standard units, the main ones are a unit of Planck time, a unit of Planck distance, and a unit of Planck mass. We can think about it this way. In standard units, it takes light just over three nanoseconds to travel one meter. So a unit of Planck time is the amount of time it takes light to travel the distance of one Planck length. So why would quantum fluctuations at the Planck scale trigger the Deutsch proposition? Is there even such a thing as the Deutsch proposition? The Planck scale can be thought of as a limit to our resolution of space and time. We don't have any camera that can resolve something as small as the Planck length or pick up changes over the Planck time. But if we could in the future build this type of a camera, this is as small as we can ever go with our current understanding of physics. The Planck scale is the point where our standard predictions that relate to particle physics, quantum field theory, general relativity, will not work. We can't describe anything this small over a time this fast with the physics that we currently know. At this scale, it's expected that quantum effects of gravity would be important. Now, the Deutsch proposition isn't an actual term in physics, but considering ideas proposed by David Deutsch and what they're doing in the movie, I think I've got it. In general relativity, a closed time-like curve is a world line in space-time that loops back on itself, a causal loop in space-time, meaning that an object following this path would return to its own past. This implies the possibility of time travel. However, it introduces time travel paradoxes like the grandfather paradox. In 1991, David Deutsch wrote a paper that tried to resolve some of these paradoxes by showing that if a quantum system were to travel along a closed time-like curve, it is possible for a solution to exist that doesn't violate causality, doesn't lead to paradoxes. Now, he proposed that the quantum system could evolve into a superposition of states that are all self-consistent. So that in the case of the grandfather paradox, the quantum system could exist in a superposition where the time traveler both does kill and does not kill their grandfather. The self-consistency condition would ensure that the outcome is always consistent with the traveler's past. Now, in this interpretation, every quantum event results in the branching of the universe into a set of parallel universes, each representing a different outcome. By traveling along a loop, creating a superposition of states, one of two things can happen. Either everything is self-consistent and you will leave the loop without having changed anything, or any changes made lead to new branches, so the world you emerge into is not the one that you left. You can't change the past of events that happened in your own universe, but the superposition of states can create new universes where events happen differently. This is basically the conversation Bruce has with the Ancient One when he's trying to get the Time Stone. Now, Deutsch's proposal is not without criticism, but this is normal for untested ideas in science. The existence of closed time-like curves is speculative, and when someone presents a solution to general relativity, like causal loops, warp drives, wormholes, it all comes with conditions, like conditions on the behavior and the structure of our universe, conditions that we don't actually know are real or not. There may be closed time-like curves out there. It may be possible that quantum time travel could exist either by the branching of other worlds from superposition states or the entanglement of quantum systems in time. The truth is that we cannot know. Not right now, anyway. Taking everything we've learned into context, let's try to summarize the science of quantum time travel in Avengers Endgame. We start with Scott claiming that time works differently on the quantum scale. This is possibly true, but it's also still up for debate. You see, the arrow of time may not always be important in quantum mechanics, but it's always been believed that causality holds true. No matter the direction of time mathematically, cause still precedes effect. Recent-ish work by Philip Walter and his team, looking at the possibilities of particles being in a superposition of time, or ideas that Vlaco Vedral is working on about being entangled in time, may change how we view time in quantum mechanics. 
it could turn out that we need a new way to describe the wave function so that we can describe a superposition not just in space but in time as well. This relative nature of time and the possibility of quantum entanglement in time also means that solutions could be found using the closed timeline curse of general relativity without creating paradoxes. But as Tony says, quantum fluctuations mess with the Planck scale and trigger the Deutsch proposition. So what I think he's saying here is that by attempting to use a method of quantum time travel, you create fluctuations at a scale where space and time are beyond our current understanding and ultimately trigger the many worlds interpretation. Meaning that for each new past encountered on the loop, you create a new branching universe. According to Smart Hulk, If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future, and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Exactly. The way this works is by creating a new timeline, one that flows from the changed past, but your timeline still continues unchanged. So while time travel becomes possible, you still can never change your own past. You can jump to a different timeline where things turned out differently, like if the TVA doesn't catch you, but you can never change the past of your own timeline. That will always be self-consistent. This is why Rhodey can't go back in time to nix baby Thanos. Like he could technically, but it wouldn't change anything for the Avengers. All it would do is create a new timeline, a new branch of the universe, one where Thanos doesn't exist, but it won't remove Thanos from the Avengers original timeline. This is why the Ancient One is concerned. Giving Bruce the Time Stone doesn't change Bruce's past, but it changes the Ancient One's future. Unless, of course, they return all the stones to their original place at the time they were taken, which Cap manages to do. So by the end of the movie, the timeline is reset and the past hasn't been changed. With that one exception, you know, that first attempt to get the Tesseract, the one that creates a new timeline, one where Loki is still alive and as mischievous as always. Quantum time travel is a very fun idea. I'm not sure if what I've talked about this month is exactly what they were going for in the movie, but it's the best way that I can find to describe the idea using real physics or speculative physics ideas. But the main thing to remember is that while quantum weirdness is interesting and leads to a bunch of things that seem impossible, we are always talking about quantum objects. To do any of this, you'd need to be quantum. And as much as Ant-Man tries to convince us that we could, we definitely can't. So the concept of quantum time travel is something to keep an eye on for the mysteries it could unlock around space-time and quantum gravity. But even if it does prove true, I'm afraid we're not going to be jumping around in our quantum time machines uh, creating new universes. That's all I've got. But what do you think about the idea of quantum time travel? You can find a text version of this video on my Substack, and if you're interested, my Patreon is totally free, and all videos, text, recommended articles, anything that I think is related, I put together in a collection there, if you want to follow along. See you next time. Stay nerdy. So Back to the Future is a bunch of bullshit?